Welcome to Living the Smarter Science of Slim, where we provide a scientifically proven lifestyle for long-term health and fat loss by eating more and exercising less, but smarter. Eat smarter, exercise smarter, live better. I am so ready for that. Hey everyone, Jonathan Baylor and Carrie Brown back with another sane, smarter, super duper, sciencey show. Hello. <laughs> I was going to insert scrumptious in there. Scrumptious. I see we're doing an S thing. Scrumtralescent. <laughs> you just made that up. I did. Speaking of S's, this is totally random, but I wanted to share it with folks because my wife discovered it this week, and it is very, very lovely. And that is a... You've been hanging out with me too long. <laughs> well, it is a sweet potato substitute. Now, I really quickly want to disclaim this in the fact that if you're going to eat a starchy vegetable, sweet potatoes are probably the best and sanest starchy vegetable out there. Obviously, you can live without eating sweet potatoes, but if you're an athlete or if you must eat a starchy vegetable, sweet potatoes are the way to go. However, if you are not eating sweet potatoes and you enjoy the taste of sweet potatoes or like sweet potato pie, blah, 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 we stumbled upon this. I'm go scared. To, go to Costco and they have this Normandy blend frozen vegetable mix in these like giant five or ten pound bags or something i think it's five pounds and it consists of yellow carrots red carrots cauliflower and broccoli so you take that it's frozen so you can thaw it out or do whatever get it so that it's ready to eat pop it in the vitamix with some cinnamon blend it till it is completely pureed and it tastes for some odd reason like mashed sweet potatoes I've never eaten a sweet potato in my life. Oh, really? Well, if you like the taste of sweet potatoes, folks, if you ever had mashed but sweet potatoes, they are quite good. You can get something that tastes a heck of a lot like it with way more vitamins and minerals and way less starch. Trying what I just suggested. That's so awesome. Give it a whirl. you got to throw some water in there, play around with it a little bit. But just like you blend green vegetables all the time. Blend that frozen mix once you thaw it out. Throw some cinnamon in there. And if you blend it, like right after you boil it, it's, it's, it steams. It's, it's quite delicious. I enjoy it. Wow. Now something that's less appetizing in the uh -oh. Vitamix. So as you know, Carrie, I have been, I found and will soon share my supplier of completely grass-fed, hormone-free, humanely raised, organic, beef liver that I have flown in for a very affordable rate. I'm talking sub $5 a pound. Wow. I, for one, cannot wait for that. And I'm desperate for some liver. And here's the cool thing, though. So liver, I, I'm not like Carrie, so I don't know how to prepare just liver by itself and make it taste good. However, we add it, we make a meatloaf, and if this sounds gross, but it really works well. No, I'm really scared. You take, you take the liver... You take like a pound of liver, you put it in the Vitamix with a quarter cup of water, and you puree, you just completely liquefy the liver, and you just add it to your meatloaf, or you add it to other stuff. People are like, why in God's name would you do that? Folks, liver is one of the most nutrient-dense foods in the world. Like, we're talking upwards of just, just huge amounts of vitamins and minerals that are very hard to find in other sources. So, it's one of those things where it's... It's like a natural vitamin pill. So it's worth trying to find ways to hide it in your food. And I had just never put meat in my Vitamix before. So it was just an interesting experience I wanted to share. Um, I, I think that's awesome, actually. It's kind of like a, of a meat grinder yeah. at home. Very proud of you. So anyway. Good job, sir. Meat grinder. Now, more mainstream. Protein powders, Carrie. Yes. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about protein powders. What would you like to talk about protein powders? Well... I want to know the difference between whey and casein. And and soy and hemp and, and rice. And soy and pea and all of that. Because we do have, I do have quite a lot of people who who are dairy-free, wh whether that is, is through choice or because they can't have mm -hmm, dairy. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'd like to be able to understand what I can tell them they can substitute my whey protein in my recipe with. Well, you, you made it a little bit more challenging for me there, Carrie, because 
your recipes are very precise. Right. And I know you can't just swap stuff out. So right. sadly, I do not feel qualified to say what they can or can't do to make right, your but, recipes work. But I can go experiment once you've given me the right direction. Yes. So part of the challenge you will find is plant-based protein powders, the most useful of which are brown rice protein, hemp protein, and pea protein. You will notice that I do not include soy protein in there. That is intentional. Pea protein, hemp protein, and brown rice protein would be my recommended sources for protein powders for those who want to avoid animal-based protein powders. If your interest is getting the highest quality, and by highest quality, I mean most complete amino acid profile and highest percentage of protein, things like a whey, a casein, an egg white are far superior. It's not debatable. It's just a, you can just look at the profile. However, they may have moral or digestive implications. So if you got to go vegetarian protein, I would say brown rice, hemp, or pea. The challenge you're going to face is I'm not sure about how many flavor options there are out there. I mean, I, I think most often if you're going to, again, I'm not a, not a vegetarian. I have all the respect in the world for vegetarians. So I'm not a huge expert, but I don't know how many flavors of pea protein you're going to find. Right. And I'm not sure how many flavors of hemp protein you're going to find. You will certainly find all kinds of flavors. And you got to be kind of careful because some of these flavors are neurotoxin-laced badness. But there's a lot of flavors of whey protein and a good number of flavors for casein protein. And a little trick is if you want to do, again, an egg white protein, you can just buy dehydrated, dehydrated egg whites. That's essentially what egg white protein is. So it has really no flavor and can be used quite robustly anytime you would use eggs. So in terms of the differences, uh, there's, I would say, a couple big differences. All vegetarian sources of protein are incomplete sources of protein, which means they do not contain all of the essential amino acids. So we need all of the essential amino acids. So this is why you hear about vegetarians doing various food combinations. That holds true for their protein supplements as well. Doesn't mean it's bad to be a vegetarian, just means you need to take one additional step. Now, when we talk about animal-based proteins, egg protein is fabulous for you. Egg whites are, I mean, they're, there's, they're just, they're perfect. They're nature's perfect protein. There's this scale called biological availability, meaning how much of protein can your body actually use. Most of us don't realize this, but our body cannot use all of the protein we ingest. For example, one of the other challenges of plant-based protein is our body cannot use all of it. So it has very low biological availability. We also talk about this with omega-3s. For example, the omega-3s we get from fish, our body can use very readily. The omega-3s we get from plants, it can't. We lose in some cases, upwards to almost 90% of it by our body converting it into a form we can use. Same thing applies to plant protein. For example, I think the protein found in nuts is, is, qu is quite low, meaning that only a small percentage of it is actually going to get utilized by our body. Egg whites are the exact end of the spectrum. They are the gold standard against which everything else is compared to. It's like, how pure are you compared to egg whites? That's how the scale has actually been formulated. Whey is also very, very pure. Casein is also very, very pure. The biggest differences, or the only, I would say, noteworthy differences are whey is going to be the easiest to find. It's also going to be the cheapest. It's also the most anabolic, meaning it's going to cause the biggest spike in insulin. It, it causes a relatively decent insulinic response. So if you have insulin issues, you want to potentially be a little bit careful with it. doesn't mean avoid it. It just means get out your glucometer. And if you have to just use a protein in place of food, remember, we're always about whole food first. But if you have to use a protein powder just as a meal, I would much rather you use a casein or an egg simply because they're going to digest much slower. They're a little bit less aggressive, to use sanity terms, and they're going to give you a more even uh, distribution of protein over the course of an hour or a course of a couple hours, whereas whey is just like, boom, immediately in your bloodstream. And that is why we recommend whey before and after your exercise, because you want that quick dose. So in short, animal protein from a quality perspective is superior to plant protein. Doesn't mean plants are bad. Plants are the single most important part of a sane lifestyle. That is just a fact. Whey protein digests much, 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 much faster and causes a bigger insulin response than casein or egg. So just keep that in mind. Use them for different purposes. 
And then if you have to go or want to go with an animal uh, plant-based protein, brown rice, hemp, or pea are preferable to soy. How's that? Perfect. Woohoo! Thank you. My pleasure. Hopefully that will empower you to empower others. Thank you. Scales. Yes. Next. Not fish scales. No. But but what kind of scales? Bathroom scales and kitchen scales. Ooh, both. Let's yes. Talk, let's talk about kitchen scales first. Kitchen scales. You all need to go and purchase a kitchen scale because... Is this because we're going to weigh our portions to make sure no. we're only taking oh in my goodness, a certain number no. of calories? Carrie's gone to the dark side! No, 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 <laughs> no. Um, for a lot of my recipes, and especially all of the baked goods, all the things that are kind of scientific... Hmm. Scientific. You will not... The only way you can get consistently good results is if you weigh because and i'm talking i guess mainly to anyone that uses the cup system cups are great for liquids because a cup of liquid is a cup of liquid is a cup of liquid however when it comes to dry ingredients a cup is not a cup because the volume is different Every time you get a cup, if you weigh it, you'll have a different weight every time. So you're not getting a consistent measure. So that's why with all my recipes, I weigh stuff because weight is absolute. A pound is always a pound. A pound is always a pound, whereas a cup is not always a cup. So you need, in, in order to get consistently great results, you need to weigh the dry ingredients and that's why my recipes are all in ounces. And I'm shortly going to add grams because I know there's a lot of people that are metric and not imperial. So I'm going to have ounces and grams to make it easier for people not to have to do the conversion. But that is why. And the only way you can do that is by getting a kitchen scale. I recommend there's these really cool digital scales which are very flat, almost like a mini computer which don't have a pan, so you can use any size bowl you mm. want as the And you, of course, the weigh container. the bowl first. You weigh the bowl yeah. first, and then you zero it out, and then put your, your stuff in, which is, is brilliant. But and also, most digital scales, you can switch between grams and ounces as well. So if you have a recipe that's only in ounces, you can weigh in ounces, and if you've got one in grams, you can weigh in grams. So that's, that's you need a kitchen scale. And, and this, just a concrete example of where I personally needed a kitchen scale, I had this experience. I switched from one brand of shredded coconut to a different brand of shredded coconut, and the finer anything is shredded, the closer it is to a liquid, meaning just the less amount of like air is, space is going to get wasted, and, and the weight of the finely shredded coconut in a cup was dramatically greater than the weight of the more coarsely shredded coconut. Another example of this is if you've ever tried to put, for example, fro like, what is a cup of frozen strawberries? Exactly it's right. It's like, well, three, eight, I don't know, it's right. totally variable, and then if you chop up the strawberries, you'll notice that you can fit twice three, as many. Yeah, in. two to three yeah. times as many in the same cup, so yeah. it's, it's brilliant, it's a brilliant distinction. Yeah. So, for all of those reasons that Jonathan has mentioned too, You'll see that even when I'm doing vegetable recipes, I will often give you a weight because I want you to have, I want, every time you cook one of my recipes, I want it to be super successful. Yep. And the only way we can get that consistently is to have weight. So that's why I do it. <clears throat> it it's important. It is important. And folks, I, I hope, I didn't actually realize this because I didn't know much about cooking and Unless you're a chef like Carrie, I don't think you would know this unless someone drew your attention to it. And that's, Carrie once made an analogy of cooking is like chemistry or is chemistry, where, like, if you were trying to concoct a fragrance, it really matters. Like, what ratio of stuff you put in matters. It's not just this estimation. If you want it to be consistent and predictable and precise and delicious, it matters a lot. So, again, do, do you have to do that? And will it explode if you don't? No, but if you want the ultimate results, and Carrie's put the time in to show you exactly what you need to do, 
I think that's actually pretty cool. Props to you, Carrie. There's a lot of garbage recipes on the internet that would, don't even take the time to do that. So to me, that that kind of shows you care. I do. I do. I care a lot. I mean, I do. I want you all to have a fantastic experience with my recipes, and you will do better at that if you weigh. And I think there's a lot of people. I've met a lot of people, particularly Americans, probably because you all use or you were raised using the cup system, who think they're terrible cooks. I don't believe that's true. I think half of the problem is that you've you've been going on this cup system, and so you think you're you're doing it all right, but because the amount of your ingredients is not consistent, you get different results. You blame yourself. You think I'm not a good cook. I can't do this. I'm bad at it. That's not the problem. The problem is that you're getting inconsistent and inaccurate quantities of ingredients to start with you can never succeed if those ratios are too far off hmm. given given incorrect tools and inappropriate tools and then getting bad results and being led to believe it's our fault seems like it happens all over the place yeah, which, you know exactly when you when we were talking about your book i mean that's that's the, exactly the same thing isn't it absolutely well and it also we could just say cook smarter mm -hmm. that's kind of what we're talking about yeah so seriously, invest in a, in a kitchen scale and use it, and you will probably find that you become a better cook overnight, just right there. And it was never about you in the first place. Ironically, as much as we like kitchen scales, the other kind of scale you may have in your house, we, we, trade scales, trade your bathroom scale for a kitchen scale. Yes. Because that kitchen scale will help you feel great and look great and it will simplify your life and it will free you and liberate you. Your bathroom scale will do the exact opposite. We've talked about this ad nauseum on many, many, many podcasts, but I just want to say it once again. If you want to weigh less, I think you've already lost the battle. Like, you have to give that up. You have to give up the desire to weigh less. Because as long as your goal is to lose weight, you will be subject to being victimized by approaches that are focused on short-term weight loss. And I will go so far as to say that I believe there's quite a bit of research to support this, that one of the major causes of the challenges we face today, both psychological and physiological, are because of this false belief that the number on the scale is the arbiter of health and is the arbiter of self-worth, and I promise you it's not. It is so non-controversial in the scientific community now that if you wanted to measure something that has any relationship to mortality, you should measure your waist and you should measure the amount of muscle on your body. Your weight is not indicative. In fact, those who are underweight have a much higher rate of total mortality than those who are overweight. Bathroom scale broken, kitchen scale purchased. Yes, bathroom scales out, kitchen scales in. And please, folks, like I cannot emphasize that enough. In fact, I would go so far. This is just like a challenge. Like if you can't stop weighing yourself, it's one. You have to get rid of your bathroom scale. Like, do not try Remove to stop it weighing. from the building. Yeah, no, like and no, get like get rid of it. Have a ceremony and physically break it and take the physical destruction of it as an indicator of the physical destruction and the freedom from that artificial system that has taught you to shrink and be less, right? It's all about be, being less, being smaller, being less. I personally think it's also focused at women so that women are supposed to be smaller and blah, blah, blah. That's garbage. That's an old model that is flawed on both a physiological as well as an emotional and moral level. Get rid of your scale because if you can't, if you cannot do that one thing, and I won't say it's simple because I know it's not, or it is simple, but it's not easy. 
you cannot get rid of your scale. I do not know how you're going to free your mind from counting calories. I do not know how you're going to free your mind from fearing fat. I do not know how you're going to free your mind from avoiding mass quantities of vegetables because it just seems like, oh God, that's a lot of food. Getting rid of your scale is a concrete thing that you can do and I would argue that you must do if you want long-term success. I have yet to meet anyone ever who has achieved what I would call health and aesthetic serenity, meaning objectively they're healthy and subjectively they love themselves who weighs themselves daily. They don't because self-love and health, neither one of them come from the value on the scale. They come from an internal place and you will not develop that internal place as long as you have a scale. Please get rid of it. I'll stop talking about it now. Yay! <laughs> I get amped up about that one. Yes, you do. <sighs> but it's good. It's good. I don't like it. It's a tw- uh, no, no, no. It's good that you that you are passionate about destroying bathroom scales. You're as passionate about that as I am about weighing things, <laughs> weighing true. food stuffs. Stop weighing things in your bathroom. Start weighing <laughs> things, things in, in your, your kitchen. kitchen. And again, not weighing them because you're watching out for portion size. No. But rather weighing them because you are being smarter so about we, cooking. And I've just thought of another great example is that that smoothie recipes, I started weighing the spinach because... A cup of spinach Mm. can be, I mean, you could be getting half as much spinach as we intended you to get just because you're using a cup and not not a scale. Yep. So that's why I'm using, and I know some people are frustrated because I won't give them a cup, but but there's a really, really, really good reason why I won't give you cups, and it's all because I care about you. I love it. And yeah, even with spinach, that's a great idea because... If you try to take spinach like leaf by leaf and put it into a cup, you'll get it. Or you mash it down yeah. like you can't. Yeah. It's just not. The scale is not the right instrument to evaluate your body composition or long-term health. But it is the right instrument in the kitchen to determine how much of something you're going to add in a recipe. Yes, absolutely. Buy a it. scale. Buy a scale for your kitchen to replace the scale in your bathroom. Exactly right. And while you're doing that, Eat more and exercise less, but do it smarter. Chat with you again soon. See ya. Wait, wait, don't stop listening yet. If you like the podcast and if there's other ways we can help you, please join us in the Smarter Science of Slim support group, which is freely available at the Smarter Science of Slim website, smarterscienceofslim.com. There you'll find all kinds of free recipes and success stories and just all kinds of fun stuff, like how to help your kids go sane and just great community content. And just one last thing before you go, if you wouldn't mind heading over to iTunes and up onto Amazon.com and leaving us a review and then going over to Facebook and liking us, we would hugely appreciate it. 